Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. And thank you for FinTech Aviv for arranging this uh, very unique and amazing event. And I'm happy to host this panel um, with a group of um, special panelists from the variety of a uh, wide variety of the industry. Uh, my name is Itamar Nivo. I'm from uh, Monitor Deloitte here in uh, Israel in the office. Uh, with me in the panel, uh, uh, Bernard Tubiana is a principal in Deloitte's office in New York. Uh, Gil Sadis, the VP product of Lemonade. Uh, Omri Yakubovic, uh, head of business development and marketing, Lank. And uh, uh, Kenneth Michel from Wake Up Pension. I will give them in a minute a, a time for a short intro. Um, we're going to speak today about InsureTech, and we try to tap on the, maybe the hottest, most impactful trend that we see in the market now and looking forward. Um, and I believe that the variety of uh, different point of views uh, from the angles of the industry will provide us with a very interesting conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Um, me as a strategist, meet my clients from the industry through the most maybe critical decision points uh, from designing the proposition, building the competitive advantages, deciding on a portfolio of products, channels, etc. cetera. Um, and we as a Deloitte are working with the players in the industry throughout maybe the more, more broader journey of the transformation from the uh, aspiration and design through the build, um, the scaling and the oper operation of the, of the business. So we see a very wide uh, angle of the industry and um, working both with the largest um, traditional players, incumbents of the areas of the market um, and also with the most um, nimble, uh, agile new entrants that try to shake up the market. So uh, we'll bring this um, point of view conversation. And now I will allow the, the panelists to, to, to present themselves shortly. So we'll start with you, Bernard. Itamar, thank you so much. And thank you all for having me on this uh, distinguished panel. It's a great topic. Thanks for having me here today. Uh, as Itamar said, I'm a principal in uh, Deloitte in our New York office, focused entirely on the insurance sector. I work with some of the very largest insurance companies really working with management teams as they are trying to uh, reconfigure themselves, reinvent themselves with a tilt towards digital to the customer experience and so forth. It is clearly one of the most exciting times in the industry as you have so many new entrants, challenging uh, old orthodoxies, uh, moving to, uh, to new platforms, new ways of doing things, reconfiguring the value chain and the like. And obviously, COVID has uh, been a, an accelerator of the move to, to digital. So very excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. And, and uh, with this, to you, Gil. Hey, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gil. I'm the VP product uh, at Lemonade. Um, I'm sure this is an InsureTech um, <laughs> convention. So I'm, I guess you know Lemonade. I don't need to introduce it. Uh, but you know trying to make this world a better place by providing really great insurance experience for our users. That's mainly. Thank you, Gil. Uh, Omri? Hey, everyone. Gil, first, congrats on the new product release that uh, Shai just shared. Um, my name is Omri. I'm the VP Biz Dev at Planck. Uh, we're an official intelligence-based uh, data platform focused mainly on the commercial insurance uh, side of things working with dozens of US carriers, all the way from the, the incumbents to the newcomers. Thank you. Ken, all about you. Thank you, Tamar. Uh, fellow panelists, pleasure to be up here on the stage with you. Uh, Kenneth Michelle, I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Wake Up Pension. We are a workplace retirement investing digital advisor. Uh, so we think that workplace retirement investors are the most underserved group of investors in the world. And what we did is we took the robo-advice model pioneered in the discretionary and IRA spaces, and we adapted it to the blue ocean of, you know, robo-advice for workplace retirement investing. Uh, 
uh, we're in the beginning in our proof of concept here in Israel, and then we'll be moving abroad. Fascinating. So uh, thank you guys. Um, with that, we're going to the first topic, and Bernard mentioned the accelerated transformation that the industry is going through. And I think with all of what we've gone through, we, we all went through the last year of COVID-19 that disrupted maybe most of the areas of our lives, work, business, etc. And there are still some uncertainties about what will be the ultimate impact of, of these on industries such in the, as the insurance industry. What we can say for sure is that um, the industry have experienced and tremendously accelerated transformation when it comes to digital, to adoption of new channels, new way of interactions. And I wonder, uh, I, I would like to hear what you think about how this change that the whole industry have gone through uh, will and is impacting the insurtech players. Um, and more specifically, um, um, who will be the, the, the winners from this uh, change? The neo uh, insurers that aim to replace the traditional players, replace the current proposition with new ways of doing insurance, uh, or or maybe the players that build their model on serving the, the traditional carriers, selling to them, selling with them, selling for them, and combine their business model with the traditional business model. So who wants to start? Uh, I, I'll be happy to, to jump in. So I'll start actually with your initial question. There are a few questions that are hiding here. Um, so I think for the insure people on the B2B side that I'm, I'm representing here, um, I think it's one of the best time to start a business and to, to be able to scale in the States without necessarily you know, foot on the ground or the need to travel uh, to play golf and, and to close um, you know, business face-to-face. Uh, -face. I would say that if in the past um, an average uh, B2B company that sells to carriers would see um, a sales cycle anywhere between 12 months to, to, to much more, um, during the COVID time, we've seen those times shortening dramatically. Uh, so part of it is the ability to do business uh, remotely, but I think the other important aspect is, is the need for change as also insurers or their agents that represent them couldn't sell face-to-face uh, -face anymore. So I think that disruption and adoption of new technologies uh, is growing faster than, than ever before. Yeah, I'll, I'll be yeah, I'll be happy to chip in. Uh, Omri, by the way, playing golf sounds <laughs> sounds <laughs> nice. I don't know, we're like we're a direct to consumer company, so I don't get the chance to play golf with uh, with our customers, but <laughs> I would definitely love that. <laughs> I, I can take um, you to this area to show you how. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, sounds amazing. Uh, but but anyway, in terms of winning, I, I'm I'm not sure we'll see kind of a clear winner in the. Kind of next few years, but but I do know, that kind of the incumbents will have to change. I think what COVID showed us is kind of an accelerated education of the market, because if we've seen you know new entrants like like Lemonade, and and we've got kind of the, the first movers advantage in a way of you know, the insure in the insure tech space, we've we've seen that as as the product gets more complicated. People tend to, you know, to call more or the need of an agent. And suddenly, you know, in, in COVID, you couldn't go to your agency or, you know, go see your agent. You obviously you could talk with the, with them on the phone, but uh, a lot of the a lot of insurance is still, you know, sold face to face. And I think what what we've seen is that many people feel more comfortable buying online, more complicated uh, uh, products like you know homeowners insurance and life insurance which we just uh, we, you know we entered this market as well and, and, and we've seen we've seen we're seeing accelerated growth um so so i think incumbents will have question you know the model the distribution the agents distribution model i don't think that insure text like lemonade will kill the need for agents i th i think there's a need for agents and i really really appreciate agents uh but we're seeing a shift and i think Agents will have to transform themselves as well and be more automated in a way that they can sell more, they can sell online, and not just face to face and, and via phone. Thank you. Kenneth, how do you see it in the pension area when you need the pension so, long term saving? 
used to be the very traditional and complex uh, area of selling and distributing. So, so you know, both B to C and B to B to C end with C. So I want to address the impact, the transformational impact or partial transformational impact of COVID on that. And it seems to me that one of the most powerful transformational factors is the growing proactivity of the REIT customers. Uh, we're seeing that in our own data and there's some very interesting studies, academic studies coming out, uh, attesting to the same thing post COVID. Uh, and I'll say more than that, sometimes proactivity can cross the line into hyperactivity. And uh, for example, if you think about March, 2020, in the first wave of COVID, one of the things that's really interesting is that retail trade, its share of stock market activity rose from 10% to 25%. Uh, and now usually when people think about the crowd, right, they think about uh, a kind of a averaging out or, or something dumb uh, and something that collectively doesn't work too much. But the thing that's important here is when you add social media technology to the store, you have a recipe for a perfect storm, right? And what happens is that when that perfect storm happens, the crowd can transform itself into an intelligent being that can give quite a, quite a clobber to, can shake an industry and smash existing players in the industry. So for example, just think about uh, all of the major hedge funds, many, many billion dollar hedge funds getting completely smashed uh, in their big bets over GameStop by the retail traders. And also on that same topic, think about Robinhood finding itself testifying before Congress because of a bunch of really angry retail traders using its platform. And I think the point is this, that in insure tech, the players in insure tech need to understand that this perfect storm can happen to them. And so they would, if they ignore it, they're ignoring it at their own peril. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so, Tomas, so I think one thing is, um, you know, if I think about the, the 2000s, so early at the, at the turn of the, the century, a lot of startups starting uh, and not seeding. Right, and I contrast that with what's going on now. I think what's going on now is that you have a cross pollination pollinization, and you have a lot of former insurance executives who feel just as passionate about the mission of helping people as startups do, uh, joining with startups. So, I think you're going to see a lot of hybrids. I think you're going to see a lot of companies where either the startup is an impetus to making the larger companies change or the other way around where they're joining or buying or purchasing or doing some kind of uh, ecosystem arrangement. And I think that's healthy because I think what will happen is it will further help us to put a finer point on differentiation. And this is not an overnight COVID thing. If I think about what's been going on with private equity for the last decade or so, think about Blackstone, KKR, Kyle and the like, Apollo, Athene, like all these things. If you think about all the blocks of business that have been traded, sold, reconfigured, and with companies reinventing themselves to be more customer-centric, more focused on something that they do very well. And then if I think about the distribution models, it's not a question of do I need brokers or not, do I need agents or not, you need policy acquisition. And policy acquisition costs money whether you're using a live person or a digital channel. You still have to get the eyeballs to the digital channel, and that's not so cheap either. And we see companies succeed with various models. And I think that's actually a very healthy thing. The last thing we need is 10 companies all looking the same, doing the same thing and so forth, because that does not translate to customer choice. So if we have in companies with different product offerings and with distribution models and the market being the arbiter of who's going to win and who's not going to win, I think that's a great outcome. And I would not expect a monolithic model to win over other models. So I don't think like all startups are going to beat all the incumbents. So all the incumbents are going to beat all the startups. I think the best of all of these models are going to succeed. And I think it's going to be a pretty exciting time and a good time for, con for consumers. 
Thank you, Nad. And I take what you said about the ecosystems, collaborations, the new ways of distribution. And I want to speak a little bit about the embedded insurance. When the, the, we see that the boundaries between different industries and the insurance industry and its adjacent uh, industries uh, is becoming blurred and the customer experience and customer journey and the customer centricity is the new king and it's the era of, of the customer. Uh, the regulation and the technology are there. Um, so we see more and more trial and errors in the market of propositions of insurance product embedded in other journeys, in other um, uh, propositions. And I wonder what you think about um, chances of this will be the new mainstream in, in a few years from now of people buying insurance um, on the go or uh, seamlessly when they purchasing other services. And who will be pos most positioned to take the leadership and these partnerships, the traditional incumbent that offers a variety of products, scale, trust, brand, and these type of values, or the new players, the insurtechs, the new entrants that are more agile, more flexible, they are the winners of the customer experience. So how will this market of embedded insurance will play uh, when looking forward? So, so if you don't mind, I want to start just maybe putting some frame to the embedded uh, terminology as I think it's in too many aspects. So there is the, the most immediate one are distribution-wise, right? So you're going to use whatever platform that the crowd is already there to sell directly insurance. That's distribution play. Then there is the data play. How can you leverage uh, like vertical SaaS platforms for selling you know, commercial insurance because the data is already there, or IoT to sell um, life insurance or health insurance, whatever. And then there is the third, I think mo most immediate fact is that insurance is sold as part of uh, another service, so you don't even need to think about it. And I think that sort of this is the, the big, I'd say innovation and opportunity, and, and we do see companies starting to act like that. But relation-wise, I think that insurance is maybe the, the hardest uh, play to sell embedded insurance as in order to, to earn the commission out of this referral, whatever that is, unless you're just buy sell, so selling it by side, um, you need to be um, a licensed agency. So you see companies like Intuit, that their main you know thing is providing financial solutions, all of a sudden they're a licensed agency in whatever, 40, 47, 50 states. Now you can all chime in and chime in and then I'll I'll interrupt you with some comments. Hmm. <laughs> Gil? Yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously I'm, I'm kind of um, not, not, not that objective here because I, I think eventually, you know, the nimble companies will win, but they, they will win not, not because, only because of the customer centricity, but because of, of basic things like, you know, developer experience. You know, if you're, a, you're an e-commerce website and you want to embed, insurance into your buying process you don't want to work with the you know xml based api and and you know organizations that take forever to to fix a bug or to do their development life cycles you want a you know a top-notch api you want a stripe like API that you can embed you know in a, in a few weeks get it over with and and deliver that experience to the customers and and another thing i think it's the it's the claims experience if we go to the customer centricity it's not just from the onboarding side it's from the claim side. You companies that will be able to pay automatically to users, right? Without, you know, calling and, and adjusters and, 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 you know, taking a claims process that will take weeks. You want to get it over within seconds. And, and I think these companies will win the kind of the embed battle. But, but Gil, I have a question for you on the first um, aspect that you mentioned. I, I agree that they'd like to work with Stripe-like, but then the question is, whether one company will win or you're going to have the plaid type of companies that just integrate to anyone that offers straight through processing. So there is an actual opportunity for new middleware um, so people can choose from whatever brand they want. Yeah, so, so, so that's, a, that's a great question. I, I, I'm not sure that there will be multiple brands because actually, you, know, you, want, you want the customer to go in a tunnel and, and kind of have one choice in every step. Because that's so the and, best and, and bidding, right? Promote whoever pays you the highest commission. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, like okay. you, you'll have a reading that that that's that's an interesting concept. But I, I think that eventually, like maybe it won't be one one winner, but uh, but it will be close to that. I think, and and you know maybe you know the e-commerce websites, the car manufacturers, whatever, they will get into optimization by state, by location, by by whatever. But I'm not sure it will happen. It will happen face. So I think first. You know they will try to embed it. They will see that it's a valid business model and and it generates income for them. And then maybe they will try to optimize. Um, but it might be too late for the incumbents to start getting into the game because if you develop a great API or a great uh, SSO that you just you know you connect your maybe your Lemonade account to the to the e-commerce website and you just you know it adds it's, itself to the to your policies automatically. You don't need to do anything as a consumer. Then I, I think these experiences will win instead of, you know, doing more steps and more variety of choices and things like that. People want it seamless. They don't want to think about it. That's not a that's not a sexy thought. Yeah, they don't want to think and they don't want to buy. It. They just you know have to or it's yeah. very easy to do. Uh, how do you see the the embedded insurance um, uh, phenomena? So, so. Listen, I'm a, I'm a former finance professor. So the way I think about insurance in general is it's a negatively correlated investment with another investment that you want to protect, right? Now I say that because when I think about it from that point of view, then the distinctions between FinTech and InsureTech, they really go away, putting aside the regulatory angles of things, okay? And so what we fully expect is more personalized hybrid sorts of products. In fact, workplace retirement investing products, almost every in the world have that capacity or have that property already. We think it's going to be more, we think it's going to be more personalized. I do want to say something about where we see the winners. Okay. To me, it's not about new versus old. I think the old can come back just as quickly. I think the new and the old can have all sorts of alliances. But I think the key element is customer centricity. But I want to say that I don't think that customer centricity, it's not gamification and it's not choice architecture and it's not artificial intelligence and it's not any other sort of algorithm, right? It's basically empathy and alignment, right? And this goes straight to the heart of the business model. The question is ultimately, are you aligned with your customer's interests or not? Okay, and I think we can agree that in financial services, this has been a historical and persistent problem. In fact, I'm honored to be on the stage with you guys because I think you're actually doing customer centricity right. And you're doing some really interesting things in your business model. And it seems to me that the winners are going to be the ones who take alignment seriously. And we're still not there yet, but I think they're the ones that are going to win. Thank you for that, Kenneth. And we are getting close to the top of the conversation. Um, I will uh, be happy to ask from you for concluding remarks, uh, remarks and Bernard, maybe starting with you, if you have comments on the embedded insurance and then to conclude, we'll do a short time. Uh, yeah, happy to. So I think what's interesting is, you know, it's nice when we get to talk about such things, concept as embedded insurance and the like, and then we step back and we have to optimize a little bit for reality because we have a highly regulated uh, country, at least in the U.S. here, and then you've got all the different states having their own regulations, which is a huge barrier to entry for new entrants, which has been protecting the established players to their own government. I mean, for, for some period, it's beneficial to them, but after a while, it is possible they will miss uh, a change in how people think and how people do, whether they're uh, indeed aligned. But I think you've got a lot of people who are generally interested in the well of their customers, of their constituents. Uh, these are the executives that I, I tend to work with. And I think you know some of you will think of them as these big monoliths. They're not. They're also populated by people, also populated by people who want to serve a good good beyond uh, what they're doing just for the bottom line. So I think um, we will see a lot of developments going forward. All of this is going to accelerate. The pace is going to accelerate. Yes, they will be embedded insurance, but there are some obstacles on that way, whether it's regulatory or the commission or the taxes and, and so forth. But it'll sort itself out. B bottom line, 
uh, whoever can eliminate the friction will be better off than those who cannot elim eliminate the friction because I think you're right. People don't want to think about it. In fact, it's a topic that people don't want to think about, it, right? Nobody wants to think about a life insurance policy because it means that you're thinking about death and that's not what people want to think about. Ask the investors of empathy if people want or don't want. Any more concluding remarks? Uh, Gil, Omri, Ken? Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 think, I think the coming trend, and I don't mean year, but years, is going to be alignment. And I mean that in the sense that when you have technology that provides information aggregation and distribution, then you start to bring uh, the you start to bring the mission of the company closer to what the customer needs. And again, I, I, it's, it's why we're in it. And I, I'm very optimistic, actually, that financial services can be really improved by the old, the new, and by their alliances together. Yeah, I'm sure we all share this. And uh, we all share the fact the, the the vision, like Bernard started with, it is, is a great and very interesting era to be in the, the financial services industry, in the fin, in the insurance industry. And... Uh, because the pace of changes and the acceleration of what we see in the markets. And with that, I, I will uh, end the, the, the panel. I want to thank the, the panelists for the interesting and insightful conversation and for your time. And we'll give thank back you the... Awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, Tal, for you, we'll give it back to you. Thank you very much. Awesome to see you all. And it was very intriguing to, to see the, you know, the correlation between all of you. So also looking forward to seeing you soon. Um, uh, that concludes our, our InsureTech panel. Um, we'll see you soon with the next uh, Fireside Chat. So thank you, everybody.